like this video is long overdue. It's almost like I found the secret to success with my skincare routine and I haven't even shared it with you. Today's video is all about face oils and I have to admit something to you. I came late and I mean really late to the face oil game. I'm sure if I was a content creator for a very long time I'd be doing this video, you know, things I was wrong about years ago that I'm no longer wrong about or that I like doing now. Okay, that's a very long stupid title, so maybe not that. Anyway, back to face oils. I had a negative experience with a face oil that I generalized to all face oils and honestly just didn't give them a fair chance. The face oil in question was a rosehip seed oil that my esthetician had recommended to me. So I bought it, brought it home. Little did I know it had gone rancid, but I had never used a face oil before. So I thought maybe this is what it's supposed to smell like. You have smelt ferulic acid, right? Did that stop me from using it? No, I continued to use it for a couple days and then finally I was like no this is definitely off that's it swore off face oils forever I know it's immature and the only reason I started using face oils is because since I've been creating content for the last two years brands have been sending me face oils to try so I was like well I have these products I better try them and the heavens opened up and I realized oh my gosh my skin loves face oils and here we are today. That is a long intro to say I have not always been a fan of face oils, but not necessarily for a good reason. I'll review some of my favorite face oils today, of course, saving my very favorite to last. I know I hate it when people do that too. Are the people that skip to the end of a video to see what that favorite thing is the same people who read the last page of a novel before they start reading it? It can't be. Who are those people? How can you read a book after you know the end? Definitely comment below your thoughts on that one. Anyway, as usual, I digress. Lots of people ask me, are face oils the same as moisturizers? Can they be used interchangeably? Are they good for combination, oily, acne prone skin? When should you use them in your skincare routine? So we'll go over all those questions in this video today. What are face oils? Well, actually they're emollients. So they're very good at smoothing and softening the look of your skin. I need all the help I can get in that direction. So that is why I love face oils. And they're often antioxidants and antioxidants are great protectors from environmental stress. When you use antioxidant serums, or in this case face oils, in your evening skincare routine, they can also undo some of the environmental stress that your skin has experienced throughout the day, from example exposure to pollution, etc. And some face oil formulations have humectants in the formulation as well, but this is generally where face oils and moisturizers differentiate. Moisturizers can help your skin draw and retain moisture into the skin to really hydrate your skin, and that's because of their water-based properties, whereas face oils are emollients, so really focusing on softening and smoothing the look of your skin, they can also add a bit of an occlusive barrier that can help lock everything in. Which is why, by the way, many people like to use face oils as the last step in your skincare routine. However, there's a bit of controversy around that. Where should face oils be placed in your skincare routine? My skincare routines follow the premise of generally thinnest consistency of product to thickest consistency, meaning your water-based serums, essences, toners are at the beginning of the skincare routine, thicker creams and moisturizers and face oils are at the end of the routine. I also apply my products in order of active ingredients, so I want those active ingredients at the beginning of the routine with my moisturizing and softening emollient properties at the end of my routine. So with that in mind, where does a face oil that has antioxidant properties fit in? Some people argue that you should place your face oil ahead of your moisturizer so that the antioxidants have a better chance of getting into the deeper layers of your skin and using your moisturizer as that occlusive barrier. And others say the reverse is true, that the molecule size of the face oil is bigger than that of a moisturizer, and so it should be moisturizer as the second last step in your evening routine and a face oil as the final last step. You could also make Mix your face oil in with your moisturizer and apply it that way as well. So I actually don't recommend ditching your moisturizer in favor of a face oil. I do recommend using a combination of the two if you think your skin requires it. It's important of course to understand your skin type when you're curating your skincare routine. If you're not sure about your skin type, I've recently done a video on how to determine your skin type. I'll link that for you here and at the end of this video for you to watch as well. I personally think that using face oils as part of your skincare routine 
routine is literally ideal for dry, dehydrated, and balanced skincare types. For reference, I have combination skin that's sensitive prone, rosacea prone, and I find face oils help to nourish my skin and protect my skin barrier, and I need all the help I can get in that direction when it comes to my skin. But can they be used for oily skin? I say yes, but proceed with caution. I think you need to find the right oil for you if you have oily skin and this is something you're looking for. Because oily skin can still benefit from the emollient properties of a face oil, you just have to be sure that it doesn't clog your pores or exacerbate existing conditions that you're trying to treat. But just know, using oils on your skin doesn't make your skin oilier. Your oily skin is usually as a result of hormone production in the skin and something internally, so adding more oil to the skin is not gonna make your skin oilier if that's what you're concerned about. But if the oil you've chosen is clogging your pores and trapping your excess sebum in your pores and causing you to break out, well then that's not a good solution either. But also remember for oily skin types that oil production is not about hydration. Hydration has to do with water so you can actually have oily skin but also dehydrated skin or a lack of water in the skin. So oily skin types shouldn't skip moisturization or or using humectant properties in their skincare routine because one does not equal the other. There are also oils that have anti-inflammatory ingredients in them which could be good for oily skin. But in general, I do think face oils are really ideal for dry and dehydrated skin. And as I age, my skin has just become more and more dehydrated with each passing year. Also, just a quick word on essential oils. Some face oils do contain essential oils and many do not. Some people are really sensitive to essential oils, so just be careful if you see them in the ingredients list that you may want to be careful, especially if you have easily sensitized skin. And also the other thing is some face oils contain nuts or derivatives of nuts, so if you have an allergy to that, steer clear of those face oils. So let's talk my favorite face oils. When it comes to the cheapest ones, I mean you really can't go wrong. The Ordinary and the Yankee List both have a rosehip seed oil that is very good for the skin. Rosehip seed oil has antimicrobial, antifungal, antioxidant, and anti-inflammatory properties. So lots of antis, no uncles. Oh my gosh, that was so bad, wasn't it? I left my ordinary bottle at the cottage when we closed up for the winter, so I hope it's safe there all winter, but I do have my Inky List one here. The ordinary one retails for $10.70 for 30 mils at the time of filming. All the prices that I give on my channel are usually in Canadian dollars, because I'm a proud Canadian. But the Inky List is $15.49, also for a 30 mil size. I don't really have a preference between the two formulations. I think I just actually prefer the Ordinary's dropper packaging to the Yankee List, and that's just a personal preference. Next is Drunk Elephant's Virgin Marula Oil. This one has one ingredient, Marula Oil, which is really rich in critical antioxidants like vitamin C, not vitamin C, like vitamin E, has flavonoids, omega-6 and 9 fatty acids. I just find it's really effective on my skin and leaves a beautiful glow. I do like that concept of a single ingredient. There's nothing more to the formulation than that. I find that very appealing when it comes to a face oil. This is the 15 mil size and it's $50. There's also a 30 mil size for $89. And given that when you use an oil, you only need a couple of drops for your entire face. That's another thing I did wrong when I first started using oils, I was using way too much. A couple of drops will do your face and your neck, and that means a little bottle like this, 15 mils, will last a very long time. So I think it's great to be able to try the smaller size of some of these oils to see if you really like it before you invest in a larger size, because that larger size I'm sure is gonna last you a year or more. They also have this adorable mini. Hang on, I gotta go get it. Look at this. It's like the size of my finger. Oh my gosh. Do you know what mini brands are? If you have children, probably do. This is what it looks like. I think I must have got this as a sample from something because I couldn't find this size on the website, but I actually love it. It is perfect for traveling. I don't even know what size it is. Showing my age here, as per usual. Three mils, it's three mils. 
So I will definitely keep this and just continue to use it for travel and fill it up as I need from my bigger bottle. I've also talked about this face oil on my channel. This is from Naked and Thriving and it's their Prevent Oil. I've worked for this brand in the past and this is one of the oils I talked about in a sponsor video I did for them on YouTube. I really like this formulation because it has jojoba seed oil in it, which I find to be a very lightweight oil. This is one of those oils that is actually good for combination or oily skin because of the texture, it's really not that heavy. There's also sweet almond oil and rosehip seed oil that we just talked about. So all of those properties I mentioned that are really beneficial for the skin. There's a rosemary leaf extract and a sunflower seed extract. So if you are opposed to fragrance, those two things bring a scent to the product. So if you're sensitive, stay away from this one. It's a lightweight formulation that sinks into the skin beautifully, which I love. The size is 35 mils and the cost is $90. Next is the Sensafine Night Oil by SVR. SVR is a French brand and for those of you Canadians, it's also available at Shoppers Drug Mart. SVR sent me over a package of products to try and I was very intrigued by the oil. It has 10 ingredients in the formulation like grapeseed oil, jojoba seed oil, sweet almond oil, and the controversial coconut oil. I say controversial because people either love it or hate it for their skin. While coconut oil has a lot of great properties around it, antifungal, antibacterial, it's definitely better for dry skin versus oily skin types. And so I was very cautious when I first started using this. I have combination skin and people generally agree that coconut oil can be comedogenic. So I don't really want to be using anything that's going to cause any more acne in my skin. So I went about using it very carefully, but I have not had any issue at all. My skin Skin seems to really love this formulation. It works great on my skin. Another lightweight oil, easy to apply and sinks in beautifully. But I want to know your thoughts on coconut oil. If you've tried any kind of formulations with it in and how it reacted to your skin, I think it'll help people to read through the comments below. Cost of this one is good at $39 for 30 ml size. Next is this one from Biosance. This is such a beautiful pink color. I have to say I'm quite taken with the color of the formulation. It's their squalene plus vitamin C rose oil. Squalene is an oil that's often used in moisturizers. In fact, it may already be in the formulation of your favorite moisturizer. And it's also a standalone oil that's often marketed by many brands. But why use just squalene when you can use something that has other ingredients that your skin will benefit from as well? In the winter months, I actually like using this oil in my morning routine, and that's because it has the vitamin C in it. It's a vitamin C derivative, and vitamin C helps to brighten the skin, is a great antioxidant for the skin. And because we're I live is very dry climate in the winter I can use those extra emollient properties in my morning routine at that time of the year I was also a little bit leery of this formulation because it does contain geraniol in it which can be sensitizing to the skin I try not to write off products just simply by reading the ingredient list because of course it's all about the formulation but I approach them with caution because I know with my sensitive and rosacea prone skin, you just never know what's gonna flare it up. So I wasn't too sure if this one was gonna work for me, but again, I've had no issue with this oil. It's also a very lightweight formulation. If I'm using it in the evening routine, I would either mix a couple of drops of this in with my moisturizer, or this one I would apply before my moisturizer just because I wanna get more of that vitamin C benefit. It's not cheap. It's 30 mils for $97, so it's quite expensive. I think they do have a mini size of this one too. Yeah, just checked. 15 mils is $52. Let me know below if any of you have tried this one. Now, a less expensive oil that I've tried that also has squalene in it is this one by BAO Laboratories. Are you familiar with this brand? I actually really wasn't, and they sent me a skincare package to try, and upon closer investigation, I realized it's a Canadian company. I always like shouting out Canadian companies where I can. This is a very calming oil that combines squalene with sea buckthorn oil, which I love as an ingredient, and combine it also with jojoba seed oil, and lotus wax which all make this serum a really soothing and calming oil for my skin barrier and the price isn't bad it's 39.65 for a 15 mil size and i'm thinking there's a 30 mil size as well drum roll please i saved my favorite for last and this is another one of those you have to understand so many brands reach out to me and ask can they send me their products to try 
Many I accept, many I do not, but the brands that I find very interesting, I either like their ethos or I like the formulation, of course I'm happy to receive the product, and if it ends up being a favorite of mine, that's great too. That's what happened with this brand. I don't know if this brand is well known, I didn't know them before, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. This is by a company called Love by Jade. I've done short videos on this particular product over on TikTok and Instagram just because I loved it so much. The size of the bottle looks really big, but it's still a 30 mil size, just some extra glass packaging around there. But it's the simple formulation of this one that my skin seems to love. It's called their Glow Serum, and I know lots of brands have Glow This, Glow That, everything's glowy. But I do find that using this oil does give me the glow that I'm looking for from a face oil. Not to say that these other ones don't. It's my favorite for a reason. I think that contributes to part of the reason. This one only has four ingredients. So again, I really appreciate the simplicity. There's plum oil in here, which is a great antioxidant. There's prickly pear, which is a barrier repairing ingredient derived from the seed of a cactus. Kind of seems like an it ingredient as of late because I see it cropping up in a number of formulations. It also has sea buckthorn. Again, we know my skin loves that. And it also has rose hip in it. It has such a beautiful scent to it. I think I'm assuming it's from the plum and the prickly pear. And that's part of the evening experience for me. While my skin may not love fragranced ingredients, or maybe I shouldn't be using fragranced ingredients according to some people because my skin is sensitive and rosacea prone, I actually love using fragranced ingredients. So it's kind of that combination of the sensorial bit combined with the relaxing and soothing part of using a face oil like this before I climb into bed. When the fragrance comes from these natural sources, I feel like it's more comfortable for my skin than of course synthetic fragrance ever would be. But I know fragrance is a hot topic in the skincare world. Would love to hear your take on it. I apply a couple of drops to this to my face after my moisturizer, although maybe I should be doing it before, I don't know. Anyway, that's what I do press it into my skin and then climb into bed. The size of this, as I mentioned, 30 mils and the cost is $65. Also, face oils needn't be just for your face. I use them for my cuticles, my hands, my elbows, my feet, anywhere that can use that extra emollient property to soften and smooth out the look of the skin in that particular area. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a fabulous day.